Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video series I will be covering the CLI of the Aruba 8400 switch. This switch is running the Aruba OS CX software which is a game changer in the industry. The Aruba OS CX software has been built from the ground up and is operating on a Linux kernel. It's using a database for network operations, configuration, analytics and much more. Although the 8400 can be fully configured through API with REST, the 8400 still has a fully functional CLI accessible through SSH or console. That allows you to configure the switch. In this first episode I will cover how to create an initial setup for accessing the 8400 remotely through SSH. Let's start with getting access to the console. You will either need a serial adapter on your laptop con connecting to the RJ45 console port on the management module or you need a USB to micro USB cable that allows you to connect to the micro USB port on the management module of the 8400 as shown in this picture. And on your terminal emulation application you have to set the baud rate to 115200 bits per second, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, no parity and no flow control. So once we have access we can start configuring remote access. There are a couple of options here. We can choose to configure the management ethernet port of the management fabric module for out of band management or we can choose a generic Ethernet port on one of the switch modules. Let me show you how to configure both options starting with the management Ethernet port. The 8400 uses the concept of VRFs whereas there are two system VRFs called management MGMT and default. The default VRF can be seen as the global VRF and the MGMT VRF is used for management by the out of band Ethernet port on the management module. If you want to manage the switch from a specific VRF you have to assign the service to that VRF. Let me show you by enabling the SSH server for the management VRF. So first we have to log in. Um, so in a clean uh, configuration the login name is admin and there is no password and what we have to do now is we have to get into configuration mode uh, so what you can do is you can uh, enter the full um, the full text or you can either just do conf uh, you'll get the same result so the next step is to configure a username and password. So there is already a default user account called admin and uh, let's set the uh, password for that username. So that's user admin password and let's set a password for that user. And then the next step is to enable the SSH server with the SSH server VRF management command. Now let me show you the status of the SSH server. So first we have to get back into the initial mode and then we do show SSH server for VRF MGMT. And you can see that the server is running. Next is configuring an IP address. As said on the out of band Ethernet uh, interface, the management Ethernet interface of the 8400. The Ethernet port of the management module can only be a member of the management VRF. So let's configure interface MGMT and let's add an IP address. IP static. 172.16.1.1 with a class C subnet mask. It's also possible to configure the interface for DHCP but obviously this is not a recommended uh, option, you know, option for out of band management. And then the final step for configuring for out of band is to enable the interface. It's no shutdown. By default on the 8400 uh, out of the box all the interfaces are shut down. 
And that's it. So let's see if we can access the out of band management interface through SSH. Let me first show you whether I can reach the switch. So by pinging from the workstation. And that's possible. And now let's run the terminal emulation 1.1, run SSH, and see if we can log in. And there you go, we're logged in. We can do show running, you can see what is configured. So that's working. Now for configuring SSH access to one of the Ethernet ports that are located on the switch modules, this is actually also very easy to do. In the previous setup we have configured the SSH server for the MGMT VRF and it's important to understand that when you configure the switch for in-band management the SSH traffic is obviously ch shared with the regular data traffic. One of the other things on a 8400 is that all the Ethernet interfaces are configured as routed ports by default. So this means that you either attach uh, an entire physical interface to a VRF or configure the Ethernet port for bridging and assign a VRF to a VLAN interface. Now let's um, okay so let's first create a VRF called in band and then assign that VRF to a physical interface that is connected to the network. Well, let's use the, uh, the SSH session for that. So we create a new VRF called in band and we attach that VRF to a interface. So this would be your interface and then I issue the following command VRF attach in band. So now this physical interface, this routed interface is attached to the in band VRF. And then the next step is to assign uh, an IP address 172.16.2.1 slash 24 and no shutdown. And final step is that you have to enable the SSH server for that VRF as well. So let's go back into configuration mode. Um, SSH server VRF in band. And now let me see if the SSH server is running. Server VRF in band. see it's running as well. Okay, and let's uh, issue a ping to see whether the interface is reachable. Um, that's also the case. And now run a SSH session to the physical interface. and we're logged in as well through the um, physical interface. Now let's see if we can get a in-band configuration running on a bridged port. So let me exit the switch first and go back to the out-of-band management interface. So what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the IP address 2.16.2.124 and remove the VRF. So that's no VRF attach and then provide the VRF name. And let me just do a show running interface 1 slash 1 slash 1 to see if the configuration is cleared so and that's the case right so uh, we're going to create a VLAN VLAN 10 and uh, sorry go into configuration mode VLAN 10 and then interface VLAN 10 
and we will be attaching the VRF to VLAN 10 and then assign an IP address so 2.16.2.1 24 and then we assign this VLAN to the interface so we go to interface 1 and what we have to do now is we have to disable routing so no routing so the interface is now a layer 2 interface and assign the VLAN 10 to that interface and then once this is configured we can check again using our favorite terminal client so there you go let's just log in again see if we have access and we do let me just show you the running configuration here so you can see here that the SSH server is running on the MGMT VRF and on the in-band VRF and the uh, interface here is bridged mode and assigned it to VLAN 10. So this is the initial setup for getting remote access and uh, of, of course we can configure additional parameters like usernames, access rights, etc. But this would be for uh, maybe a next video. This concludes this short demonstration video on how to perform an initial setup on the 8400. I hope you find this uh, useful and if you did please like the video. If you have any comments or requests please let us know and have a great day.